Hello, welcome to another Stat 510 video. Um, in this video, we're going to talk about two or more, that is, multiple or many random variables uh, simultaneously. So, um, when we're talking about multiple random variables at once, we want to talk about uh, joint distributions. That is, how do these random variables, um, how are they distributed together? How do they vary together? Um, so for a discrete random variable, um, we could talk about the joint PMF, that is probability mass function, um, which is literally just um, the and probability that's relevant there. Um, and then in the continuous case, we can talk about the joint probability density function, um, which has uh, these properties that we see here, which are similar to the um, single variable case, but you know, uh, it's zero or greater everywhere. Uh, if you integrate over the whole region, which now spans two variables, uh, it'd be one. Uh, and then uh, calculating probabilities is integrating over a particular region. And then for both, the joint CDF is um, the probability that uh, uh, you know, you're, you're below you know, two values simultaneously. Um, right, okay, so... Um, Another thing we can do when we're dealing with multiple variables at the same time is start with a joint distribution that tells us the distribution of X and Y together, but then what we call marginalize and get just the distribution of one random variable at a time. So for uh, discrete, uh, the marginals would look like this. So you'd have a marginal for X would be, so um, you'd have to essentially uh, sum over the y values, uh, or is it basically you're averaging out the y, um, or for y, you're, you're summing over x to sort of average out the effect of x. Uh, and then in the continuous case, I can't spell. Continuous. Right? Um, instead of adding, instead of a summation, you're doing an integral. But so to get the marginal of x, you need to integrate out y and vice versa, um, right? And again, so that's going from the joint distribution, so seeing how everything is distributed together to saying, no, I wanna isolate and just look at the effect of the distribution of one random variable at a time, but to get there, you have to consider how the other variable is uh, distributed. Okay, so um, we can then talk about independent random variables. So, um, in this case, um, random variables, uh, X and Y, are independent uh, if uh, you can take um, an AND probability uh, given, given the joint and make it the product of the two marginal probabilities. So this theorem here says that uh, um, if you have the, the joint and X and Y then are independent if and only if the joint is equal to the project uh, product of the marginals for all X and Y. Okay. Um, right. So uh, independence will come up again in a second when we get to some one of the more important concepts in the course. Um, okay. So next is conditional distributions. So um, a conditional distribution is going to say, all right, well, we want to know, say, the distribution of X when Y takes a particular value. So, so in a case like this, so here Y is going to be fixed and X is the input to this function. So here what we're looking at is the conditional probability mass function of x given y. Um, so x given y has its own distribution and that's uh, what we're looking at here. Uh, and then you can do a similar thing um, for a density function for a continuous distribution. Okay, so that was a super high level overview of those three concepts. Um, you know, you'll go through the mechanics of some of these in the homework. But the thing I want to stress is the difference between a joint, a marginal, and a conditional. So a joint distribution tells us how variables vary together. Um, whereas the marginal tells us, 
about one value alone or in isolation. And a conditional distribution tells us how, say, one random variable is distributed given a particular value of the other random variable. Um, and all of these things sort of relate to the question of independence. So, um, for example, you know, if X and Y are independent, the joint would be equal to the product of the marginals. So, um, how they vary together is a very specific thing there. It's the, they're independent. So if one moves, the other one doesn't move in any, um, predictable way, uh, sort of similarly, like, you know, if, uh, you know, a conditional, um, will, will give us, uh, information about, um, independence when you can compare it to the joint and the marginal. Okay. Um, right. So, um, everything we just talked about, I just gave an X and a Y and we were, we only had two random variables, but often we could talk about a random vector, um, where we have a set of say, in this case, n random variables, variables. And so then you could talk about the joint distribution, uh, collectively of those n random variables. Uh, so that could be a joint uh, PDF or PMF, depending on what you're looking at. And then again, you could do conditioning and marginalization. So you could find the marginal distribution of any one of these random variables, but you'd have to integrate out all the other ones, or you can condition on some set of them uh, and talk about how the remainder uh, vary conditioned on that. Um, but we're not going to, you know, go into the crazy mechanics of that, but the same ideas uh, ex extend to uh, working with bigger collections of random variables. Um, but most importantly, um, there's one type of collection of random variables that we're gonna see very, very, very often in this class. And those are IID random variables. That means independent and identically distributed. That means that all of the variables are um, independent and they all have the same marginal distribution. So oftentimes when we do that, uh, we call uh, those random variables taken together as a random sample. If you can hear that, uh, I think my wife turned on the oven and now the smoke alarm is going off, but that's okay. Um, right, uh, and so uh, this little n then would be called the sample size. Uh, so, what oftentimes when we use that is distributed symbol, but we have a bunch of random variables on the left-hand side, uh, it's often implied that that means they're IID. Uh, and then this F would be the distribution. Uh, and again, that's the marginal distribution for each of the individual random variables. Um, so when you have IID random variables, the uh, joint distribution is very easy to work with. Because of the independence, we can multiply together each of the marginal distributions, uh, but then better yet, because of the identical nature of them all having the same marginal, uh, there's, it's not a different one each time, it's the same one each time. Uh, and then this product of all those marginals becomes very easy to work with. Um, it's very nice to take a log of this quantity uh, and we will, this will be something that will come back when we talk about statistical inference and talk about uh, maximum likelihood, this will be a very uh, useful thing. Okay, the last thing I wanted to mention just real quick uh, before we wrap up, this is you know not as in depth the video as the previous one. I wanted to mention that uh, we can also do transformations with multiple random variables. So um, I wrote I wrote a few examples down here. So one kind of thing you'll see is like okay, so x one is Poisson with some lambda x2 is Poisson with some other lambda. Well, then if you define a new random variable y that is x1 plus x2, hey, look, it's also Poisson with a new lambda now. Um, and I, I, would, I don't wanna say that you can just look these things up, but you can. Um, so uh, there's various resources, some of which I've posted where relationships like this, some of those you can just look up and then utilize um, unless you're directly asked in this class to drive it. Um, this next one is, is an IID thing. So if we had X1 through Xn IID normal mu sigma squared, and I defined a new random variable called X bar, which is the average of those random variables, um, 
turns out that that is also normal with a, the same mean and a slightly different um, uh, uh, variant. Um, I would say these this this particular uh, uh, um, relationship you should memorize. I don't have a good way to um, classify things like that, but. But, th but basically, there, there's some relationships like this, like distributions of sample means of IID random variables that you just need to know. But more broadly, like we saw with single variables, you could say, well, define Y to be some function of some number of other random variables. And then you need to default back to either using the distribution function technique or the change of variables technique or the moment generating function to derive that um, distribution of Y. Sometimes that could be very easy. Sometimes it could be incredibly tedious. Um, and you might have to do one or two of those on homework, but again, that's not the focus of this class, but it is something that you should have seen before, so we're mentioning it again. Okay, anyway, um, that's all I had for this quick video. Um, so yeah, uh, if you made it to the end of the video, good job, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.